Mr. Heathcliff? Yes. Well, I'm Mr. Lockwood, your new tenant at the Grange. I'm lost. Can I get a guide from amongst your lads? No, you cannot. I've only got one and he's needed here. Oh, well, then. I'll have to stay till morning. Do as you please. Quiet! Sam! Thank you for your hospitality. Could you extend it to a cup of tea? Shall I? You've heard him ask for it. I presume the amiable lady is Mrs. Heathcliff. Yes. Yes. Would it be taxing your remarkable hospitality if I sat down? I hope my hospitality will be a lesson to you to make no more rash journeys on these moors. As for staying here the night, I don't keep accommodations for visitors. You can share a bed with one of the servants. Thanks. I'll sleep in a chair, sir. No, no. Stranger is a stranger. Guests are so rare in this house that I hardly know how to receive them. I and my dogs. Joseph, open up one of the upstairs rooms. Here's a room for this, sir. Idle chamber. Nobody slept here for years. It's a trifle depressing. Can you light a fire? Yeah, no fire burning yonder, great. Chimbley's all blocked up. Uh, very well. Thanks. Good night. Get out of this 
they come back to me? Oh, Kathy, they do come. Do, do, once more. Oh, my heart's darling. Kathy, my own. My... Kathy! the shutter and something touched me, something cold and clinging like an icy hand. And then I saw her, a woman. Well, then my senses must have become disordered because the falling snow shaped itself into what looked like a phantom. But it was nothing. It was Kathy. Who is Kathy? A girl who died. Oh, no, I don't believe in ghosts. I don't believe in phantoms sobbing through the night. Poor Kathy. I don't believe that life comes back once it's died and calls again to the living. No, I don't. Maybe if I told you her story, you'd change your mind about the dead coming back. Maybe you'd know, as I do, that there is a force that brings them back if their hearts were wild enough in life. Tell me her story. began 40 years ago, when I was young, in the service of Mr. Earnshaw, Kathy's father. Wuthering Heights was a lovely place in those days, full of summertime and youth and happy voices. One day, Mr. Earnshaw was returning from a visit to Liverpool. Do not catch me! Kathy! Kathy, here! Oh, yes, I don't want your father to see you in that dress. world have you got there? <laughs> a gift to <of> God. <laughs> Although it's as dark as if it came from the devil. <laughs> Quiet, Miss Honey, lads. We're home. He's a dour-looking individual. Aye, and with a reason. I found him starving in the streets of Liverpool, kicked and bruised and almost dead. So you kidnapped him? Oh, <laughs> not until I'd spent two pounds trying to find out who its owner was. <laughs> but nobody would lay claim to him. So rather than leave him as he was, I brought him home. Uh, here, here. Let's go on. Come on, Come down. Come on, off with you. Kathy, Hindley. Welcome home, Mr. Lanshaw. The children are just coming down. <laughs> Don't look so shocked, Ellen. He's going to live with us for a while. Give him a good scrubbing and put some Christian clothes on him. Food is what he needs most from the looks of him, Mr. Earnshaw. He's as thin as a sparrow. Come into the kitchen, child. Kathy, Hindley. Well, there you are. <laughs> there you are, Kathy. It's what you've always wanted. A riding crop. Be careful how you use it. Oh, I'm so glad you got back soon, Father. Yeah. It's good! Ow! Oh, 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 no, 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 children, no. <coughs> this is Hindley's violin. One of the best in Liverpool. <coughs> oh. Yeah. Mm. Fine tone. Oh. And the bow to go with it. Here you are, Paganini. Oh, children, this is a little gentleman I met in Liverpool who has accepted my invitation to pay us a little visit. He, he's dirty. Oh, no, don't make me ashamed of you, Cathy. When he's been scrubbed, Ellen, show him Henley's room. He'll sleep there. In my room? He can't. I won't let him. 
Children, you may as well learn here and now that you must share what you have with others not as fortunate as yourselves. Take charge of the lad, Ellen. Come along, child. What's your name? We'll call him Heathcliff. One of me. Don't you know that you're handsome? Do you know what I've always told Ellen? That you're a prince in disguise. You did? I said your father was emperor of China. Your mother an Indian queen. It's true, Heathcliff. You were kidnapped by wicked sailors and brought to England. But I'm glad they did it. Because I've always wanted to know somebody of noble birth. All the princes I ever read about had castles. Of course, they captured them. You must capture one, too. There's a beautiful castle that lies waiting for your launch, Sir Prince. You mean Penniston Crag? Yes. Oh, that's just a rock. If you can't see that that's a castle, you'll never be a Prince Heathcliff. Here, take your launch and charge. See that black knight waiting at the drawbridge? Challenge him! Now charge, 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 charge!
my dear wife, little Kathy. You may come up and pray beside him now. <laughs> You're not wanted up there. My father's past your Wheatley. Go and help the stable boys harness the horse for the vicar. Do as you're told. I'm master here now. Hindley was indeed master of Wuthering Heights. It was no longer the happy home of their childhood. Joseph, bring me another bottle. That's the third, Mr. Hindley. The third or the twenty-third, bring me another. Wine is a mocker. Strong drink is raging, Master Hindley. Uh, stop spouting scripture and do as I told you, croaking old parrot. Yes, Mr. Hindley. Sit down, Cathy. Tell your excuse from the table. Joseph, fill Miss Catherine's glass. Oh, my little sister disapproved of drinking. Well, I know some people who don't. Heathcliff, saddle my horse. And be quick about it, you gypsy beggar. Filthy as a pink star. Is this the way you do your work? Clean it up. I want this floor cleaned and scrubbed tonight. Well, that's in there showing your teeth. Give me a hand up. I want your work done when I come back at dawn, do you hear? Oh, you're hoping I won't come back. You're hoping I'll fall on the road and break my neck, aren't you? Aren't you? Nothing's real down there. Our life is here. Yes, my lord. The clouds are lowering over Gimmerton Head. See how the light is changing? It would be dreadful if Hindley ever found out. Found out what? Talk to me once in a while. Shouldn't talk to you at all. Look at you. You get worse every day. Dirty and unkempt and in rags. Why aren't you a man? Heathcliff, why don't you run away? Run away? From you? You could come back to me rich and take me away. Why aren't you my prince like we said long ago? 
Why can't you rescue me, Heathcliff? Kathy, come with me now. Where? Anywhere. And live in haystacks? And steal our food from the marketplaces? No, Heathcliff. That's not what I want. You just want to send me off. That won't do. I've stayed here and been beaten like a dog. Abused and cursed and driven mad, but I stayed just to be near you. Even as a dog. And I'll stay till the end. I'll live and I'll die under this rock. Do you hear? Music. The Lintons are giving a party. That's what I want. Dancing and singing in a pretty world. And I'm going to have it. Come on, let's go and see. Come on. on your shoes. you insolent rascal. Get out of this house. I won't go without Kathy. But, Father, please, she's in pain. Go on, Heathcliff. Run away. Bring me back the world. Pack this fellow off. I'm going. I'm going from here and from this cursed country both. Throw him out. But I'll be back in this house one day, Judge Lytton, and I'll pay you out. I bring this house down in ruins about your heads. That's my curse on you. On all of you. And so Kathy found herself in this new world she had so often longed to enter. And after some happy weeks, Mr. Edgar brought her back to her own home. Oh, my God. 
Why did you stay so long in that house? Didn't expect to find you here. Why did you stay so long? Why? Because I was having a wonderful time. A delightful, fascinating, wonderful time. Among human beings. Go and wash your face and hands, Heathcliff. And comb your hair so that I needn't be ashamed of you in front of a guest. What are you doing in this part of the house? Go and look after Mr. Linton's horses. Let him look after his own. Heathcliff. I've already done so. Apologize to Mr. Linton at once. Bring in some tea, will you please, Evan? I simply cannot understand how your brother can allow that beast of a gypsy to have the run of the house. Don't talk about him. Kathy, how can you, a gentlewoman, tolerate him under your roof? Roadside beggar giving himself airs of equality. How can you? What do you know about Heathcliff? All I need or want to know? He was my friend long before you. That blackguard? Blackguard and all, he belongs under this roof and you'll speak well of him or get out. Are you out of your senses? Get out, I said, or stop calling those I love names. Those you love? Yes, yes! What possesses you? Do you realize the things you're saying? Say that I hate you. I hate the look of your milk white face. I hate the touch of your soft, foolish hands. Some of that gypsy's evil soul has got into you, I think. Yes, it's true. Some of that beggar's dirt is on you. Yes, yes, now get out!
Heathcliff. Make the world stop right here. Make everything stop and stand still and never move again. Make the moors never change and you and I never change. The moors and I will never change. Don't you, Cathy? I can't. I can't. No matter what I ever do or say, Heathcliff, this is me now. Standing on this hill with you, this is me forever. Heathcliff, when you went away, what did you do? Where did you go? I went to Liverpool. One night I shipped for America on a brigantine going to New Orleans. We were held up by the tide and I lay all night long on the deck, thinking of you and the years and years ahead without you. I jumped overboard and swam ashore. I think I'd have died if you hadn't. Kathy, you're not thinking of that other world now. Smell the heather. Heathcliff, fill my arms with heather. All they can hold. Come on. Kathy, you're still my queen. between her wild, uncontrollable passion for Heathcliff and the new life she had found at the Grange that she could not forget. sniveling back after the way you've treated him, you can keep waiting forever. What's wrong with him? Sending him perfume. Isn't he any pride? I sent my apologies, didn't I? I can't believe this change in you, Miss Cathy. Just yesterday, it seems you were a harem scarum child with dirty hands and a willful heart. Look at you. Oh, you're lovely, Miss Cathy. Lovely. That's a very silly lie. I'm not lovely. What I am is very brilliant. I have a wonderful brain. Indeed. It enables me to be superior to myself. There's nothing to be gained by just looking pretty like Isabella. Every beauty mark must conceal a thought, and every curl be full of humor, as well as brilliantine. Heavens above such prattle. Wait. Since when are you in the habit of entering my room, Heathcliff? I want to talk to you. Go outside, Ellen. I will not. I take orders from Mistress Catherine, not stable boys. Go outside. What? All right, Ellen. And now that we are so happily alone, Heathcliff, may I note what I owe this great honor? He's coming here again. You're really unbearable, Heathcliff. Utterly unbearable. If you didn't think so this morning on the moors. Well, my moods change indoors. Is he coming here? No, of course not. Now, please go away. You're lying. Why are you dressed up in a silk dress? Because gentlefolk dress for dinner. Not you. Why are you trying to win his puring flatteries? I'm not a child anymore. You can't talk like that to me. I'm not talking to a child. I'm talking to Cathy. My Cathy. Oh, I'm your Cathy. Yes. And I'm to take orders from you and allow you to select what dresses I shall wear. You're not going to sit all evening simpering in front of him again listening to his silly talk. Oh, I'm not. No. Well, Heathcliff, I am. It's much more entertaining than listening to a stable boy. Cathy, don't you talk like that. I will. Go away. This is my room. It's a lady's room, not a room for servants with dirty hands to come into with their insults and complaints. Now, let me alone. Yes. Yes. Tell the dirty stable boy to let go of you. He soils your pretty dress. But who soils your heart? Not Heathcliff. Who turns you into a vain, cheap, worldly fool? Linton does. You'll never love him, but you'll let yourself be loved because it pleases your stupid, greedy vanity. Loved by that milksop with Stop buckles it. on his shoes. Stop it and get out. You had your chance to be something else. 
The people are certain were all you were born to be, or beg on the side of the road, begging for favors, not earning them, but whimpering for them with your dirty hands. That's all I've become to you, a pair of dirty hands. Well, have them then. Have them where they belong. It doesn't help to strike you. Good evening, Ellen. Good evening, Mr. Lincoln. I hope I'm not too early. Miss Cathy will be down in a minute, Mr. Lincoln. Thank you. Hello, Mr. Linton. I'll tell Miss Cathy you're here. On the holy hour. Doesn't he know, young fool, when it's time to go home? Oh, that's Mr. Edgar now. Go and fetch his horse. Take these apples into the larder. Hey, Lord. Spare the righteous and smite the ungodly. Oh, more than my own life, for belonging to her more than my own soul. Don't let her see me, Ellen. No. Ellen. I wonder whether you were still up. Has he gone? Ellen, I've got some news for you. Oh, the kitchen's no place for that. Let's come into the parlor. Ellen, come here. Miss Cathy, sit down. Ellen, can you keep a secret? Ellen, Edgar's asked me to marry him. What did you tell him? I told him I'd give him my answer tomorrow. Do you love him, Miss Cathy? Yes, of course. Why? Why? That's a silly question, isn't it? No, not so silly. Why do you love him? Because he's handsome and pleasant to be with. Well, that's not enough. Because he'll be rich someday, and I'll be the finest lady in the county. Oh. And now tell me how you love him. I love the ground under his feet, the air above his head, and everything he touches. What about Heathcliff? Oh, Heathcliff. He gets worse every day. It would degrade me to marry him. I wish he hadn't come back. Oh, it would be heaven to escape from this disorderly, comfortless place. Well, if Master Edgar and his charms and money and parties mean heaven to you, what's to keep you from taking your place among the Linton Angels? I don't think I belong in heaven, Ellen. I dreamt once I was there. I dreamt I went to heaven and that heaven didn't seem to be my home. And I broke my heart with weeping to come back to earth. The angels were so angry, they flung me out into the middle of the heath. 
on top of Wuthering Heights. And I woke up sobbing with joy. That's it, Ellen. I've no more business marrying Edgar Linton than I have of being in heaven. But Ellen, Ellen, what can I do? Thinking of Heathcliff. Who else? He sunk so low. He seems to take pleasure in being mean and brutal. And yet, he's more myself than I am. Whatever our souls are made of, his and mine are the same. Linton's is as different as frost from fire. My one thought in living is Heathcliff. Ellen! I've suffered. The little happiness he's ever known, I've had too. Oh, Ellen, if everything in the world died and Heathcliff remained, life would still be full for me. Hey, hey, Heathcliff! Where's the boy? Heathcliff! Heathcliff! Come back! Come back! He must have been listening. Heathcliff listening to us? Yes. Well. How much did he hear? I'm not sure, but I think to where where you said it would degrade you to marry him. It's Kathy! Heathcliff! Heathcliff! There's no use of calling on Heathcliff, Miss Kathy. He's run away on his to the best house. Out of the storm, Miss Kathy, you've cut your death of food. Oh, Ella, he won't come back. Oh, yes, he will. Last time he did. This time he won't. I know him. Which way did he go, Joseph? Yonder, right on what board. Oh, come in, Miss Cathy. You must come in. You should have known I love him. I love him. <laughs> I told him to stay awake till I came home. Master Hindley. He expected me to unsettle my horse on Manorly Rock. Master Hindley, you've got to go out again. Miss Cathy, Miss Cathy's gone. They're looking for her. Joseph, everybody. Gone, gone where? Out of the storm hours ago. Heathcliff ran away. He took a horse that left and she went running after him. Oh, she did? Yes. Well, don't stand there with your mouth open like a great fish. Fetch me a bottle and we'll celebrate. Master Hindley, she'll die on the moors. You've got to go out and have them to find her. Suppose I tell you. She's run after that gypsy scum, let her run. Let her run through storm and hell. The birds of a feather and the devil can take them both. Now, get me a bottle. House. Quickly. Where was she? Near one of the rocks on Penniston Crag. The life almost died of her. Heathcliff. 
20 drops in a glass of claret, well warmed, and then add a lump of sugar. There's nothing else I can think of to tell you except keep her in the sun and give her plenty of cream and butter. In another month, Kathy, you'll be feeling like new. Goodbye, dear. Goodbye, Doc. Goodbye. Goodbye. She'll be going home soon, Doctor. What's needed now is peace and orderliness in her life. That's not to be found at Wuthering Heights. Has she mentioned him at all? She hasn't spoken his name since the delirium passed. Well, sometimes fever can heal as well as destroy. I made some inquiries in the village of the people who knew him. What did you hear? No sign nor hint of our precious Heathcliff. He's disappeared into thin air. Hello, Edgar. Well, Isabella, how's our invalid? Much better, I think. Let me have a look at her. Where have you been all day? I've missed you. Oh, this time of year, every one of our tenants has something to complain about. For the last hour, I've been arguing with old Swithin whether or not we'd build him a new pigsty. Yes? And he decided we should. I saw Henley in the village this afternoon. Oh. Wanted to know when you'd be coming home. I'm afraid I wasn't very truthful. I told him Dr. Kenneth said it would be months and months. Oh, give me that. It's time for her medicine. Now, what did Dr. Kenneth say? Twenty lumps of sugar in a glass of milk. Oh, well, I'll go and ask Ellen. Yes, go and ask Ellen. She's such a darling. But then you've all been so nice to me. That's all I think about, is how nice you are to me. But still, I can't stay here forever. Why not, Kathy? If I can make you happy. You have made me happy, Edgar. You've given me so much of your own self, your strength. Darling, let me take care of you forever. Let me guard you and, and love you always. Would you love me always? Yes. It's so easy to love you. Because I'm no longer wild and black-hearted and full of gypsy ways? No, I... Of course, you were right, Edgar. What you said long ago was true. There was a strange curse on me. Something that kept me from being myself. Or at least, from being what I wanted to be. Living in heaven. How sweet you are. I've never kissed you. No one will ever kiss me again but you. No one. I'll be your wife. And be proud of being your wife. Darling. And I'll be good to you and love you truly. Always. years went on, they were really in possession of a deep and growing happiness. Oh, I wish you could have seen Miss Caddy then. She became quite the lady of the manor and seemed almost over fond of Mr. Linton. For Isabella, she showed great affection and presided over Thrushcross Grange with quiet dignity. It 
looks as though you've fallen into a trap, Father. Yes, it does, doesn't it? There you are. Checkmate. Thank you, Father. Oh, well, I'll go and dress for dinner. What's the matter with the dogs? Well, it's probably one of the servants coming back from the village. Kathy, I talked to Jeff Peters this afternoon about that new wing of ours. It doesn't look as though we're going to be able to marry Isabella off for another decade or two. She's so particular. It's a brother's duty, dear Edgar, to introduce his sister to some other type than fops and pale young poets. Well, you want a dragoon. Yes, I do, with a fiery moustache. <laughs> Poor Isabella. I'm afraid I got the only prize in the county. Oh, thank you, darling. And for me, heaven is bounded by the four walls of this room. Yes, we're all angels. Even my little pretty point hero. I'm just putting wings on him. Well, speaking of wings, I'll show you those plans. Miss Cathy. What is it, Ellen? Someone wishes to see you. You sound as if it were a ghost. It is. He's come back. Who? Heathcliff. What does he want? He wants to see you. Tell him... Tell him I'm not at home. Not at home, Kathy? To whom are you not at home? It's Heathcliff. Seems he's come back. Well, that's news. Where's he been? America, he said. He's so changed, I hardly recognized him. Oh, for the better, I hope. Oh, yes, he's quite the gentleman. Find clothes or horse? Don't stand there prattling. Go and tell him I don't wish to see him. Oh, nonsense, Kathy. We can't be as cruel as that. He's come a long way, and he's a fine gentleman, so Ellen says. Let's see how America's managed to make a silk purse out of our master Heathcliff. Show him in, Ellen. Yes, Master Edgar. Edgar. Yes? Chilly here. Why be nervous? The past is dead. It's nonsense, darling, to tremble before a little ghost which returns, a, a dead leaf blown round your feet. Darling, you may smile at him without fear of offending me, because it's my wife who smiles, my wife who loves me. Yes. Yes, I was silly. Thank you, Edgar. Mr. Linton. How are you? Hello, Kathy. I remember this room. Come in, Heathcliff. Sit by the fire. Do you have a whiskey? No, thank you. Well, I've never seen such a change in a man. Heathcliff, I wouldn't have known you. You seem to have prospered since our last meeting. Somewhat. Ellen said you'd been to America. Yes. We all wondered where you went. Oh, have you met my sister Heathcliff, Miss Linton? Miss Linton? Well, what brought about this amazing transformation? Did you uh, discover a gold mine in the New World, or perhaps you fell heir to a fortune? The truth is, I remembered that my father was an emperor of China, and my mother was an Indian queen. And I went out and claimed my inheritance. It all turned out just as you once suspected, Cathy. That I had been kidnapped by wicked sailors and brought to England. That I was of noble birth. Are you visiting here long? I mean, in the village? The rest of my life? I've just bought Wuthering Heights. The house? The stock and the moors. You mean that Hindley has sold you the estate? He's not aware of it as yet. I'm afraid it will be somewhat of a surprise to him when he finds out that his gambling debts and liquor bills were all paid up for him by his former stable boy. 
Or perhaps he will merely laugh at the irony of it, Mr. Linton. But I don't understand. I don't understand how this could have happened without Mrs. Linton hearing of it. Modesty compelled me to play the Good Samaritan in secret, Mr. Linton. By heaven, Heathcliff, this is the most underhanded piece of work I've ever heard of in this county. Oh, well, if I'd only known, I, I knew that Hindley was in financial difficulties, but, but not that his property was being stolen from him by a stranger. I'm neither thief nor stranger, merely your neighbour, sir. Now I'll say good night. Wait, Heathcliff. Edgar and I have many neighbours whom we receive with hospitality and friendship. And if you are to be one of them, you're welcome to visit our house. But not with a scowl on your face or an old bitterness in your heart. Thank you. It occurs to me that I have not congratulated you on your marriage. I've often thought of it. Allow me to express my delight over your happiness now. Edgar, I think you behaved abominably. What? And you too, Cathy. I'm dreadfully disappointed in both of you. What in thunder are you talking about? You could at least have been civil to him. I conducted myself perfectly, Isabella, and so did Cathy. You dismissed him as if he'd been a servant. Well, don't tell me you thought of him as anything else. I thought him very distinguished. I hope I misunderstood you. It's impossible that any sister of mine could think of Heathcliff as anything but a, a surly dressed up beggar, a lout and a boor. I shall take precautions to ensure that you never see him again. Now go to dinner. this time, and if he tries to get in, I'm going to kill him. I'll find that key and bring me a bottle of wine. Is about a bad night, Mr. Hindley. A bad night, you call it. Well, how can I stay sober with that vulturous beak inside me? He stabbed me in the dark, Joseph. He robbed me, robbed me of my home and coke. Where's the wine? Dr. Kenneth has forbid it, Mr. Hindley. Blast Dr. Kenneth! Get him what he wants, Joseph. Well, Dr. Kenneth has forbid it, Mr. Heathcliff. What difference to the world whether he's drunk or sober? Order Dr. Kenneth. What does I tell you? Get out. It's too early in the morning to look on the devil. Your ingratitude, Hindley, makes me almost sad. All I have done to you, Hindley, is to enable you to be yourself. My money has helped you to drink and gamble and enjoy the world as you wished. And now that you're without a home of your own, I remember that you once gave me a place to sleep when you might have turned me out. And I allow you to remain, Hindley. And even provide you with solace against the doctor's orders. I'll have Wuthering Heights back, do you hear? I'll be master here and I'll turn you out as I should have done years ago. We're just in time, Joseph. Mr. Hindley is beginning to whine and stutter. He needs fire in his veins. A little courage with which to face his unhappy life. I'll have my gold and I'll have your blood and hell can have your soul! <laughs> Laugh now, Heathcliff. There's no laughter in hell. All you have to do is to shoot. They'll thank me for it. The whole world will say I did right in ridding it of a rotten gypsy beggar. Yes, they'll say that. Shoot and you'll be master here again. The whole country will resound with your courage, Hindley. Go on, shoot your puling chicken of a man with not enough blood in you to keep your hands steady. Oh. 
You remember that time you hit me with a rock, Hindley? The times you shamed and flogged me as your stable boy? You were a coward then, and you're a coward now. Take him out, Joseph. Find some place for him to sleep. Bye. I'll put him to bed. Not in the master's room. <laughs> I'm master here now. Joseph! His pistol. I'll hide it. No! The gentleman must not be deprived of his weapons, Joseph. I prefer that he have it by him always as a reminder of his cowardice. Master Richard. What is it? A lady to see you. A lady? From where? The Grange, sir. The Grange? Why didn't you tell me? Get out of my way. Miss Linton. I hope I'm not disturbing you. Not at all. I was riding behind the heights on the moors and my horse went lame and... Uh... And you brought him here? Yes. That was very wise. Shall we look at the unfortunate animal? Oh, no, that isn't necessary. I've, I've put him in the stables. He's, he's being taken care of. I see. Won't you come in? Get on with you, boy. I was furious with my brother and Kathy, too. I told them so. I thought they acted most shamefully. Let me give you a chair. Your brother didn't send you with these apologies. Oh, no, he forbidden me to. To speak to me? Yes. And Mrs. Linton? She's also very angry with you. So that in all the country you are my only friend. I would like to be. Well, let us celebrate our new friendship by a gallop over the moors, shall we? Oh, but my horse is lame. My dear, your horse is not lame and it never was. You came to see me because you are lonely. Because it is lonely, sitting like an outsider in so happy a house as your brother. Lonely, riding on the moors with no one at your side. You won't be lonely anymore. I was so afraid 
you wouldn't come. Tonight would have been ruined if you hadn't. Good heavens, is that Heathcliff? Yes, it is. I can't believe it, Cathy having him here. It's not impossible. Cathy. It's my sister. It was just a young girl's fancy, but one must be careful not to inflame it with too much opposition. Allow it to spend itself harmlessly in a few dances. Oh, Madame Ellis is going to play the harpsichord. Do come and sit down. I shall let you hold my hand underneath my fan. Gypsies dance. I'm surprised to see such a bandit ways creep into so fine a house. <laughs> yes, father used to say it would undermine the whole of society and turn us into profligates. May I have the pleasure, Isabella? Oh, thank you, Giles, but I don't think I can. Nonsense, Isabella. Let me see your work. Will you watch me? Of course. Dancing this dance. Thank you. I'm nearly exhausted. With the moonlight and a breath of air refresh you. Always. Are you enjoying yourself, Heathcliff? I've had the pleasure of watching you. You're very grand, Heathcliff. So handsome. Looking at you tonight, I could not help but remember how things used to be. They used to be better. Don't pretend life hasn't improved for you. Life has ended for me. How can you stand here beside me and pretend not to remember? Not to know that my heart is breaking for you. That your face is the one with the light burning in all this darkness. You could know. I forbid it. Do you forbid what your heart is saying to me now? Saying nothing. It is. I can hear it louder than the music. Oh, Cathy. Cathy. I'm not the Cathy that was. Can you understand that? I'm somebody else. I'm another man's wife and he loves me. And I love him. If he loved you with all the power of his soul for a whole lifetime, he couldn't love you as much as I do in a single day. Not he, not the world. Not even you, Cathy, can come between us. He 
Heathcliff, you must go away. You must leave this house and never come back to it. I never want to see your face again or listen to your voice again as long as I live. You lie. Why do you think I'm here tonight? Because you willed it. You willed me here across the sea. Dad, there is me, Heathcliff. Oh, there you are. I'm just going to play a shotish. Come along. It's quite suitable to your high moral character. What's the matter? Has Cathy been behaving horribly again? If she went my sister-in-law, I'd say she was jealous. <laughs> Come along. No desire to discuss Heathcliff with you anyway. Isabella, you behaved disgracefully tonight. In what way, may I ask? It was bad enough you're asking him here. But to make a spectacle of yourself, to throw yourself at him. Catherine, be careful of what you say. You fool. You vain little fool. I'll not be silent any longer. I'm going to tell the truth. You're old enough to hear it and you're strong enough. Let me go. Not till I open your eyes. My eyes are quite open, thank you. Isabella, don't you see what he's been doing? He's been using you to be near me. To smile at me behind your back. To try to rouse something in my heart that's dead. I'll not have it any longer. I'll not allow you to help him any longer. It's you who are vain and insufferable. Heathcliff's in love with me. It's a lie. It's not a lie. He's told me so. He's kissed me. He's, he's kissed me. He's held me in his arms. He's told me that he loves me. I'm going to your brother. Go to him. He's asked me to marry him. Tell Edgar that. That we're going to be married. That Heathcliff's going to be my husband. Isabella, you can't. Heathcliff's not a man, but something dark and horrible to live with. Do you imagine, Catherine, that I don't know why you're acting so? Because you love him. <laughs> yes, you love him. And you're mad with pain and jealousy at the thought of my marrying him. Because you want him to pine for you and dream of you, die for you, while you live in comfort and security as Mrs. Linton. You don't want him to be happy. You want to make him suffer. You want to destroy him. But I want to make him happy. And I will. I will. I heard your voices. We were just discussing the ball. Well, there's plenty of time for gossip tomorrow, and you ought to come to bed, darling. You look tired. Good night, Isabella. Good night. Joseph. Mistress Cathy, I mean, Mr. Hindley's away. It's Mr. Heathcliff I wish to see. Oh. Oh, I, I, I'll try and find him. Leave us, Joseph. Cathy? What brings you to Wuthering Heights? Does Edgar know? I doubt he'd approve. Heathcliff, is it true? Is what true? That you asked Isabella to marry you? It is true, then. Oh, Heathcliff, you must not do this villainous thing. She hasn't harmed you. You have. Then punish me. I'm going to. When I take her in my arms, when I kiss her, when I promise her life and happiness. Oh, Heathcliff, if there's anything human left in you, don't do this. Don't make me a partner to such a crime. It's stupid. It's mad. If you ever looked at me once with what I know is in you, I would be your slave. 
Cathy, if your heart were only stronger than your dull fear of God and the world, I would live silent and contented in your shadow. But no. You must destroy us both with that weakness you call virtue. You must keep me tormented with that cruelty you think so pious. You've been smug and pleased with my vile love of you, haven't you? Haven't you? Well, after this, you can think of me as something else than Cathy's foolish and despairing lover. You can think of me as Isabella's husband. And be glad for my happiness, as I was for yours. Drive to the village. Collect Mr. Linton. Very well, ma'am. Going after them is useless. You must go after them while there's still time. They cannot marry. They must not marry. Oh, darling, don't disturb yourself. There's nothing I can do. But you must, Edgar. Get your pistols. Go after them. Kill him. And stop them from marrying. This marriage cannot be, do you hear? It must. you hit yourself over the head with a hammer the instant you get up in the morning? Why? Well, if you hit yourself hard enough, you'll remain unconscious the whole day and achieve virtually the same results you would from a whole gallon of spirits, with much less wear and tear on the kidneys. Don't you agree with me, Mrs. Heathcliff? What does it matter? Well, I'd hoped that it did matter, that when you came here, things would change. No. Only I changed. I remember this house when it rang with laughter and love. Goodbye, Mrs. Heathcliff. Ask your husband to call another doctor in future. Whoever dwells in this house is beyond my healing arts. I shall miss you, Dr. Kenneth. Isabella, I brought you into the world. But it's a world you're not going to grace very long if you stay in this house. Dear child, I must tell you this. Go back where you belong. Back with Edgar, if only for a month or two. It will mean your salvation. And his. Edgar's disowned me. Nonsense. That was natural under the circumstances. But he needs you now. He does? Why? Cathy is gravely ill. In fact, it's only a matter of days. Hours, perhaps. What is it? Fever, inflammation of the lungs. But there's something beyond that. I don't know. I'd call it the will to die. Kathy died. I might begin to live. Isabella. Begin to live, eh? This house with Heathcliff, nothing can live. Nothing but hate. I can feel it breathing like the devil's own breath on me. And you, he hates you worse than he does me. He loathes you. Each time you kiss him, his heart breaks with rage because it's not Cathy. Isabella! Why don't you kill him? I've forbidden you to speak to me about Heathcliff. Kill him! Stop it, do you hear me? Kill him, kill him! 
Well, that's the first lucid talk I've heard out of Hindley for weeks. It's not very Christian talk, but at least it's coherent. It seems to make some points. Heathcliff. I'm delighted with your improvement, Hindley. I tried to stop him. Thank you, my dear wife. Your loyalty is touching. Heathcliff. Your curses will come home to feed on your own heart. Every agony you've given will return. Heathcliff, why do we have him here? I can't breathe with him in the house. Existence would be so much less without my boyhood friend under my roof. Heathcliff, don't you see? You poison yourself with hating him. Darling, please send him away and let love come into the house. Why isn't there the smell of heather in your hair? Oh, Heathcliff, why won't you let me come near you? You're not black and horrible as they will think. You're full of pain. I can make you happy. Let me try. You won't regret it. I'll be your slave. I can bring life back to you, new and fresh. Why are your eyes always empty? Like Linton's eyes. They're not empty. If you'd only look deeper. Look at me. I'm pretty. I'm a woman, and I love you. You're all of life to me. Let me be a single breath of it for you. <laughs> Let your heart look at me just once. <laughs> oh, why did God give me life? What is it but hunger and pain? What are you doing here? I want to speak to Miss Isabella. Well, you can do so in front of me. Her brother has asked me to bring her home for a visit. He needs you with him, Miss Isabella. Why? Why? Let go of me, Heathcliff. Kathy. She's ill. Mr. Edgar wants you to come home at once, Miss Isabella. She's dying. Go in. She belongs to Edgar if she's dying. Let her die where she belongs, in Edgar's arm. Let her die. Let her die. Tell 
going to get my horse ready. I'm going to Dr. Kenneth. Be quick. Yes, sir. Will you forget me when I'm in the air? I could as soon forget you as my own life. Kathy, if you die. Boy, Cliff, come. Let me feel how strong you are. Strong enough to bring us both back to life, Kathy, if you want to live. Why did you kill yourself? Hold me. Just hold me. No, I'll not comfort you. My tears don't love you, Kathy. They blight and curse and damn you. Don't break my heart. Oh, Kathy, I never broke your heart. You broke it. Kathy, Kathy, you loved me. What right to throw love away for the poor fancy thing you felt for him, for a handful of worldliness? Misery and death and all the evils that God and man could have hammered down would never have parted us. You did that alone. You wandered off like a wanton, greedy child to break your heart and mine. Heathcliff, forgive me. We've so little time. Oh, Kathy. Kathy, you're wasted hand. Kiss me again. He's Cliff. He's coming, Mr. Linton. For heaven's sake, go on and be quick. I belong to him, that he was my life, my being. 
Don't listen to her ravings. And it's true. It's true. I'm yours, Heathcliff. I've never been anyone else's. She doesn't know what she's saying. But you can still get out. Go before they get here. On your last black deed, Heathcliff. Leave this house. She's at peace now, in heaven and beyond us. What do they know of heaven or hell, Kathy? Who know nothing of life? Oh, they're praying for you, Kathy. I'll pray one prayer with them. I repeat till my tongue stiffens. Catherine Earnshaw, may you not rest so long as I live on. I killed you. Haunt me then. Haunt your murderer. I know that ghosts have wandered on the earth. Be with me always. Take any form. Drive me mad. Only do not leave me in this dark alone, for I cannot find you. I cannot live without my life. I cannot die without my soul. Oh, oh my dear. I can still see and hear that wild hour. The poor Heathcliff trying to tear away the veil between death and life. Crying out to Cathy's soul. To haunt him and torment him till he died. You say that was Cathy's ghost I heard at the window? Not her ghost. But Cathy's love, stronger than time itself. Still sobbing for its unlived days and uneaten bread. What's the matter, man? Oh, God, man. Stark Raven, man. Dr. Kenneth. I saw Heathcliff out on the moors in the snow with a woman. A woman, you say? Yes, a woman. I saw her with him plain as my own eyes. It was Cathy. Cathy. Go on, man. What happened? No, I don't know who it was. I was trying to get up near to them when suddenly my horse reared and plunged and I was thrown. I called out to them, but they didn't hear me, so I followed them. I tell you, I saw them both. 
He had his arm about her. So I climbed up after them. And I found him. Only him. Alone. With only his footprints in the snow. Under a high rock on a ledge. Near Peniston Crag. Yes. Was he dead? No, not dead, Dr. Kenneth. Not alone. He's with her. They've only just begun to live. Goodbye, Heathcliff. Goodbye, my wild sweet cat. 